sermon today, and you know, as, as you might surmise, we might, might not make it through the whole thing, and that's okay. That'll be all right. <clears throat> we have been going on a journey through the book of Hebrews, and uh, we call this, this particular journey Hebrews for Gentiles. And you're all Gentiles. Anybody here was born a Jew? Anybody? We're all Gentiles. So the book of Hebrews was written to Hebrews who weren't Gentiles. It was written to folks who understood the Old Testament. And so the folks in those days didn't have Bibles, of course. And so the folks that didn't know the Old Testament in those days, the Gentiles, there's a lot of things that are spoken of in Hebrews they wouldn't understand or comprehend because they didn't have the background of the Jewish faith and of the tabernacle and the wilderness and of the temple and of the priests and all that stuff. But this is written to those folks who had converted to Jesus Christ from the Jewish faith. And uh, for those of us who do have Bibles, since we do know now historically about uh, the tabernacle and the wilderness and the office of priests, we can look at this now and we can glean a lot from it just like those Hebrews of that day could glean. So we are in chapter 11, so let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. If you have missed any of the previous messages, I'll, I'll talk fast, maybe I'll make it through it, who knows. If you've missed any of the previous messages, you can find them online at shorelinegospel.org, shorelinefullgospel.org. All right, so let's read Hebrews chapter one and I'm, or 11, verse 1, and I'm going to read it first in the King James, and then I'm going to switch over. I'm going to read it first in the King James only because we mostly have all memorized it in the King James, and so it's the most familiar verse for us. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You've heard that, haven't you? Faith, I like to say, gives substance to the things we hope for. Faith is the evidence for the things we cannot see. Now, are there things that you hope for? All right. If you don't hope for anything, then you're hopeless. So I hope you hope for something. Do you realize that you can only hope for things that are not present now? So let's look at what uh, Romans has said about hope. We're going to look back. Uh, I'm just going to revert back to uh, some scriptures we read a few weeks ago in Romans 8, 22 through 25. Romans 8, 22 through 25 says this. <clears throat> we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Listen to this. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. So you see, you don't hope for what you already have. It'd be ridiculous to hope for what you have. You know, like, I have a wife. Be ridiculous for me to hope for a wife. I have a wife. I don't need another one. Trust me, one's enough. So, I don't need faith or hope for that. I already got that, right? But you hope for the thing you don't yet have. And you see, your hope would be hopeless if you didn't have something to attach it to. You see, I can hope for certain things because God told me he's going to give them to me or he wants me to have them. And so, uh, you know what? That's not hopeless. God says, you just hang on. You just stand in faith. You just be waiting. And I'm hoping for certain things like all of creation is hoping for that has not yet come to pass. For example, uh, I'm hoping for that day where I will have a brand new body and it'll be eternal and it won't get sick anymore and it won't get old and all those other things just like you are. So I'm not hopeless. I have a hope. I have a hope of a life after this life, don't you? But I'm not in it yet. So it's in the future, right? Right? But I have that hope, and I'm not hopeless, all right? So it says that, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. It'd be foolish to wait for something that you don't think is ever going to happen. But we're waiting for it with expectancy, and that's the key. This is a picture of faith in action. We hope for what we do not have, but that isn't the end of it. We are not hopeless, but instead we are expectant. We expect something that we don't presently have to come to us, and we're not moved by how long it takes. That's faith in action. Because we know it will come, and therefore we wait patiently for it because we know the one who's promised it is good for it. Right? So I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 again, but at this time I'm going to read it a little clearer version, the NLT, because I like the way it puts it. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot even see. 
that's good. So the verse does not tell us how to have faith, but it tells us how faith behaves. It tells us what faith looks like. Now let's move on to verse 2. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Or if you have the King James, it says, for by faith the elders obtained a good report. In other words, there's a good report for the, about their lives. There was a good report left in the Scriptures about, look what these people did. Here's the good report. Because by faith, they did some great things, didn't they? It says, Ab- now, I want you to know this. Abraham was the father of the nation of Israel. Abraham encountered the true and living God who he had not previously known. And when he did, God gave him a promise. And the promise was for a child, right? This gave Abraham a hope because he had a promise. This was not a promise that could come about by natural means because Sarah's womb was dead. She was beyond childbearing years. But Abraham did not falter in his faith, in his expectancy, because he believed that God who promised it was able to do it. Right? When Abraham was tested after Isaac was born, and the Lord told him to sacrifice his son Isaac, his only son, Abraham did not falter, but believed that even if his son was to be put to death, God was able to raise him from the dead. That's faith in action. And you'll notice when we talk about faith of all these people that we're going to talk about, faith has action. Faith will change the way you walk and the way you live. Faith faith will, will shape your lifestyle. Okay? So the kind of faith that Abraham gave him a reputation He received a good report for his kind of faith. He was called the friend of God. He was called righteous by God himself. Here's what it says in James 2.23. And the Scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Why was he called a friend of God? He was called a friend of God because he had a relationship, of course, because you can't be a friend without a relationship. And he believed God in what God said. And he believed it, not just saying, okay, I believe, help my unbelief. He says, I believe it, and I'm expectantly looking forward to it. That's faith in action. Third verse. For by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed by God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. You see, by faith, it says we understand something. That's an interesting way of putting it. Because understanding is something that comes to the natural mind. But this is an understanding of things that have nothing to do with natural things. Because by faith we understand, how in the world do we understand that things that are seen were made by things that you can't see? That doesn't make sense. But by faith we understand it. Because God has given us a faith, and in our spirit we know these things to be true, though we cannot see physical evidences of them. We know them because we know where they came from. They came from God, and His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that His Word is true. And so we know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I don't have to prove it to myself. God said it. It's so. God created the universe with His Word. I believe it. You know why I believe it? Because I have faith in the one who said it. You know where I got that faith? from the one who said it. As he, he's the one who gave me the faith. By faith, we accept without question the things that make no earthly sense because they're not earthly in origin. By faith, we understand that everything in the universe was made by God's spoken word. That's what faith can do. But how do we get ourselves that kind of faith? How do you get that kind of faith? There are two things that the Bible tells us about getting that kind of faith, how you get it. Number one, it all begins with God. God gives us our initial faith. God gives everybody, in fact, a measure of faith. You see, you wouldn't even be able to believe for God if he didn't give you this measure of faith to begin with. Everybody's born with a measure of faith. Now, you can spend it how you want. You can, you can end up throwing it out the window and saying, I don't believe any of that stuff. But God gave you enough faith to believe for salvation because if you didn't have it, you wouldn't be saved. There will be no person on judgment day who will be able to say, God, I didn't have enough faith to receive salvation. they will say, I gave it to you. Ephesians 2.8 says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it's the gift of God. See, God gave it. It's not of yourself. He said, I, I worked up all this faith. No, no, God gave you that gift. So does God give this kind of saving faith ne- uh, that's necessary for salvation? Does he give that to everybody? Here's what the Bible says, Romans 12.3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every man's been given the measure of faith. Every man, and it's been given. 
He didn't earn it. It's a gift. So you have the gift of faith so you can receive the gift of salvation. So all of us are without excuse. We can accept the things of God that are not of this world because God has provided us with supernatural faith. So how do we increase the faith we do have? How do we grow that faith? Well, we need to know what God says is true. When you know what God says is, is true, you can, uh, you can basically like this. See, see, the Lord told Abraham, you go out there and you walk across all this land, and everywhere your foot shall tread, that becomes your land. Well, you know what? The minute you get saved, you're starting to walk in the Word of God. And every promise you can put your foot on, that's yours, that's yours, that's yours, that's yours, that's yours. And the more promises you find in there, the more you can claim is yours. And your faith for all those things gets built up more and more. And suddenly you had faith for one thing. Now you got faith for a thousand things. Because God said it in His Word. That's how you grow in that kind of faith. Now, because of this, you see Romans 10, 17. And I'm going to read it to you in a very unusual version. Oh, no, I'm going to read it to you first before I read the unusual version. I'm going to read the normal version. It says this, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing. Uh, oh, yes, in hearing by the Word of God. But I'm going to read it to you in another version. It's called the Jubilee version. Never heard of that one. But I like the way it says it. It says this, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and the ear to hear by the Word of God. The ear to ear comes from God too. So once you hear God's promises, you have more things you can believe for and attach your faith to. And thus broadening the scope of your faith. Now back to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. I'm going to run through this. It was by faith that Abel bought, brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by this example. That's his good report. His good report was what? His good report was his faith caused him to do something in faith. You see, faith will cause you to do something. Faith doesn't get you just to sit in a pew. Faith gets you to live a life, all right? One thing you're going to find is faith without works is dead. That's what the Bible says. Now, let's move on to verse 5 and 6. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up into heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Well, I'm glad he gave us faith so we could please him because without it, we couldn't please him. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he's the rewarder of those that sincerely seek him. Enoch, I want you to know this, had no Bible. There's no Bible. There was no writing. So what did Enoch have faith in? I guess he had to have faith in what God himself spoke to him. I guess he had to have faith in God who God was. I guess he had to have faith in his relationship with who God was to him. But he had faith, and he walked with God, and it says God ple was pleased with him. Now, he had this thought about this God that he was serving, the God that many people didn't know at all. He says, you know what I believe about this God? I believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I don't believe he's a cursor. He's a rewarder. You see, a lot of people think God is the punisher. God is the hitman. And God's looking for you to step out of line so he can smack you down like a fly, right? Just smack. But God wants you to change your thoughts. And he wants you to say, you know, I believe God's not a punisher but a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. God wants to bless us. If God didn't want to bless us, he wouldn't have sent Jesus. But he did. So God's intention is to bless us. How do we know that? By faith, because we know him, right? So Enoch walked with God as a friend walks with God. Enoch acted upon what Enoch heard from God. And Enoch believed that by acting upon it, Enoch would be rewarded. And because of this, he lived a life that pleased God. Now, we need to understand that all these people had the faith that God would bless them, not curse them. Hebrews eleven seven. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat or an ark to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. It had never rained before on earth. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Now, I want you to know something. Before I was married, I had a certain kind of faith, and I could walk it out because it was all on me. Since I'm married, now I have to consider my wife, too, in the picture because she's part of me, right? So it gets more complicated when you've got a family. You could just do it on your own and go, well, you know, if it all blows up, it's just me anyway. But if you got a family behind you, it's like, i got to make sure this is right. 
So Noah believed for his whole family to be saved. It wasn't just, for, it just, it wasn't just Noah and God. But there's a problem with that. It was just Noah and God to a point. It was God that spoke to Noah. He didn't speak to his wife. He didn't speak to his kids. So this guy, you know, would have been, he would have, could have said, yeah, I'm a holy man of God, and God told me to build an ark. I'm going to build an ark. But he had to convince other people to build an ark too. Right? It's like, family, I got something to tell you. God spoke to me. Yeah? What did he say? He said, we got to build a boat. We got to build a boat. We're in a desert. Why do we want to need a boat? Because it's going to rain. What's rain? Well, water's going to fall from the sky. Well, that's never happened. What are you smoking, Noah? You know? <laughs> what are you on, Noah? Where'd you get this word, Noah? God didn't tell that to me. Yeah, but I'm your father, and I'm the leader of this household, so we're going to build an ark. Oh, man. You suppose his wife didn't have any issues with that? Man, I'll tell you what. Even if she was a godly woman, this is, oh, yes, Noah. Oh, Lord of the household. Yes, yes, whatever you say. Even if she did that, I guarantee you, after year 50 hits, she goes, no, we got to talk. It's been 50 years. Your kids are getting old, and all they know how to do is build a boat in the desert that's worthless. They can't even sell that thing. They've been wasting their life, working night and day, swinging a hammer and nail. And guess what? Nothing has fallen from the sky, not a single drop. Nothing. You're crazy or what? Are you sure you heard God? Are you sure? Yes, I heard God. Are you sure? Yes, I did. Well, we're going to build for 10 more years. But if not, we're coming back and say, better check that out again. So they come back 10 years later, 60 years after the ark. It's like, okay, still nothing's happened. You really still believe this? Do you still believe this stuff? So God spoke to you and he didn't tell any of us? And we're supposed to help you build this thing for the rest of our lives? How long is it going to take, 100 years? Yes. Are you kidding me? That had to be hard, but Noah by faith kept going. He kept going. And I'm sure he was persecuted. And I'm sure he was maligned by his neighbors. You know? I mean, years ago there was a Bill Cosby uh, thing about Noah and the ark. And it's like, the guy comes out and he goes, Noah, what's that thing? Can you get it out of my driveway? That's like blocking everything. You know, he's talking about this. Thing. He goes, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. What are you, crazy? We're in a desert. What do you need an ark for? Well, it's going to rain. Well, what's rain? He goes, well, let me give you a hint. He goes, do you know how to tread water? That's what he said. You know what? Noah had to look crazy to people, but Noah looked crazy for 100 years. And then one day after 100 years, Noah didn't look crazy anymore. Whoa, he was right. He was right. Why? Because he expected that what God said would come to pass. That's faith. And his faith made him take action. And his action was building a boat because he could have just been preaching it for all those years and not doing it, just preaching it and not doing it. And guess what? He would have drowned with everybody else. You see? You can't just preach it and not do it. You have to do it too. Faith will cause you to do it. Right? Right? Verses 8 through 10 in Romans 11. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as in his inheritance. Okay, that doesn't make sense. You're going to give me an inheritance. So, like, are there relatives there that are going to die and give me this land? They're just going to hand it to me? No, no, there's nobody there you even know. And they're going to give me the land. And i got to leave the land I already have, the thing I have already established. You make me leave that to go get something I don't have. Sounds kind of risky, doesn't it? But you know what? He took his household with him. He took his people with him. It says he went without knowing where he was going. He didn't even have a map. So his, his wife came, no doubt, and said, okay, so we're all going to pack up and leave. Where are we going? I don't know. Really? Do you have a map to? I don't know. No, I don't have a clue. And we're supposed to follow you. And why should we do that? Because God told me to do it. And we're supposed to believe you hear God. That's crazy. That's crazy. But you know what? Somehow he convinced them. And they went out. And he believed that God will fulfill his promise. And I'm sure a lot of people said, Abraham moved? Where, where'd he go? Oh, he just left. He left all his, you know, land. Why? Well, because he's going out there trying to claim some other land that's not his, that is, in, that is inhabited by strangers. Really? Well, he's obviously lost his mind. Okay. So it says this, ninth verse, and even when he reached the land God had promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promises. Abraham was confidently 
looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. See, Abraham had expectancy. He was looking forward to something. Why? Because God had promised it. Abraham was confidently looking forward. You know, he was confidently looking forward to something that didn't fully happen in his lifetime. So on the day he died, he could have had some second thoughts. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was all in vain. I don't know, but it doesn't say that. It says he confidently looked forward. And not only that, he passed the promise on to his son, and his son passed it on to his son and said, keep believing, keep going, keep believing. Faith has a hope that that it attaches itself to. And this hope confidently looks forward to that hope being fulfilled. Verse 11 through 12 says this, it was by faith that even Sarah was able to bear a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. That's the, perp, that's, the, that's the key. I believe God will keep his promise. Therefore, I act upon that. And therefore, I expectantly wait for it. And so, a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand of the seashore, there's no way to count them. Now, Sarah believed that God would keep his promise. Verse 13 through 16. We're cruising through this. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. Did you hear that? They died still believing. Some people go, I had this promise from God, and here it is, my last day on my deathbed, and it never happened. Oh, I guess God failed me. These people say, no, 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 no. Even if I die, he will fulfill his promise. He will fulfill some promises in this life for you to see, but in the next life, he will fulfill other promises. We have promises in both lives. But he will fulfill his promise. He will not. He will not back out on his promise. So, it says, 13th verse, all these people still believing what God promised them did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he's prepared a city for them. Now, some of these people died in faith not seeing the complete fulfillment themselves, but they expected that God will fulfill his promises, some in this life, some in the life to come. Verse 17, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son to whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned, listen to this, he reasoned. Now, how do you reason this out in your natural mind? Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham received him, his son, back from death. So Abraham reasoned. But his reasoning is not a reasoning you could do with a natural mind because he reasoned, well, you know, God can always bring him back to life. That doesn't make natural sense. But his reasoning is based upon his belief that God can do anything. Well, if God can do anything, then he can bring my son back to life. Now, that's great faith. You know why that's great faith? Because at this time in the Bible, there is no historical example prior to Abraham of ever, of anyone ever coming back to life. He was believing for something that never even happened yet. He said, I believe that God is even able to bring him back from the dead if he dies. That's the kind of faith he had. Verse 20, it was by faith that Isaac promised Blessing for the future sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. These men of faith had faith even for things that would happen after their death because they believed that God could not lie and would keep all of his promises. They acted like they were true because they actually believed they were true. Your actions will give evidence to what you actually believe. And what you actually believe will shape your life. Your life is shaped by what you actually believe. Now, here we go. I don't know that I'll make it all. Maybe I'll stop, but we still got a few minutes. Verses 22 through 26. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He says, I know you're going to leave Egypt. Even if I don't make it, even if I'm dead, you're still going to be set free because God promised me you're going to be free. He says he even commanded them to take his bones with them when he left because he believed God. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 
He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking ahead to his great reward. Now, Abraham or Moses believed God's promises for things he could not yet see, and this determined his lifestyle. You see, here's what he was doing. He had the pleasures of sin uh, for a season set before him. He had all the treasures of Egypt right before him. He could have chosen what he already had right before him. This is the bird in the hand. The, all the treasures, I can be, I could be like king in Egypt, man. I can have all this stuff. But he said, I'm going to push all that aside for a promise from an invisible God that's better because I believe him, and I believe he will reward me. So I'll put aside the pleasures of this life for the promises of what God has promised. That's faith in action. That's why he's in this list. He, forego, he, for, he would forego the pleasures of this life so he could have what was better, what was heavenly. It was by faith, 27 verse, that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who was invisible. Did you hear that? He kept his eyes on the one that was invisible. You know those can't be naturalized because he's invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover, to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost so the angel of death would not kill their firstborn. Abraham's faith in God determined the choices he made in the actions, or Moses' faith in God determined the choices he made and the actions he took. Faith without works is not real faith. It's dead. 29th through 30th verse. It's by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as they were on dry ground, but the Egyptians tried to follow and they were drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. All right. So, the children of Israel, I never see those folks in the Old Testament as being people that really have a whole lot of faith. In fact, they're doubting all the time. In fact, they've got a daily reminder, a pillar of, you know, a cloud and a pillar of fire in, in the night, and still they're doubting God every step of the way. But I'll tell you this, they did have some faith, and perhaps they were a little bit motivated. They had some faith to go through the Red Sea because, you see, you go, well, God split the thing. So, wow, they're, they're, you know, they didn't have faith for it to split. Yeah, but they had faith to walk through it. You see, after it splits and you're still walking down there and it's 100 feet of water on both sides of you, you go, oh, my God. This could come crashing down. Maybe this is God's trap just to wipe us all out because we've been whining so much. But they said, no, we're going to walk through. We're going to walk through. By faith, they walked through, and God preserved them. They had faith they would make it to the other side because the God who was holding up the water was a God you could trust, right? By faith, they walked around Jericho seven days, seven times, right? Now, by faith, they, they made themselves look foolish. Faith will cause you to do things that other people mock you for, like building an ark, okay? Believing for a son when your wife's 100 years old or whatever she was, right? You know, Faith will cause you to do some crazy stuff. So they're walking around this wall, and can you imagine they're being jeered at, no doubt, for day two and day three and day four. You bunch of idiots, you fools. This wall's impenetrable. You don't have a chance. We're going to kill you all. And they're going around and around. Like, that's it, huh? You're just going to pray and sing. Fine, whatever. Go round and round. And you know what? They go, look, dude, you know, you're leading us here, um, and it's been day six, and nothing has happened. Do you really want us to go around one more time? Yeah, one more time. <sighs> okay, one more time. And guess what? By faith, they went around one more time. Even though it had failed in their minds for six days, the seventh time, boom, the walls came crashing down. They go, our God is real. Our God keeps his promises. It may look like it's too late. It may look silly. But our God always comes through, and he keeps his promises every time. Okay. So I'm going to cruise through this last part so quick you won't even remember it. No. 39, 30, 31. It was Rahab that was a prostitute, and she was not destroyed with the people of her city who refused to obey, who refused to obey God. For she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. She wasn't even a Jew. She was, in fact, not even a righteous woman. She was a prostitute. But she believed in the God of the children of Israel that he would make good on his promises. Verses 32 through 35, how much more do I need to say? This author is saying, do I need to say more? Isn't this like enough? How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice. They received what God had promised them. 
They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire. They escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned into strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back from death. And that's all great exploits in faith. But that's not all the faith. There's others. It says, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. They expected something better to come. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Others were killed with a sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute, oppressed, and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. But they were counted as champions of faith because they stood tall. When they said, renounce your God or die, they said, we'd rather die because we have faith in the one who's made his promises. And as we stand short in his promises, he will make good on his promises, whether it's in this life or the next life, he will make good on his promises. And we look forward to those things. The last two verses, all these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. You know what? I haven't either. Neither of you. We have a promise of a resurrected eternal body and a heavenly home, a mansion in heaven, And we haven't received those yet, but you know what? We don't fail here because we believe those things are true. And we live our lives accordingly. And we believe that God is the rewarder of us because we diligently seek him. And he will not let us down just like he didn't let them down. It said, for God had some better thing in mind for us so that they would not be made perfect without us. In other words, they wouldn't get the completion of all the finality of all that God had promised until We got in too. We got into the kingdom too. And a day will come where all of us, all the hopes, all the promises, all those things you've wanted uh, that God has promised you all your all your life, the eternal life that you have ahead, the uh, the time of being with the Lord forever and ever and ever, without tear, without sorrow, without fear, without any of that. All of that's going to come to pass. Why? Because by faith we keep walking forward, and we don't give up. All right, that's the end of the story. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for faith that you initially gave us. And we want to grow that faith by continually taking hold of every promise that's in the Word of God. We take them by faith, and we believe in the one who gave the promises. And we believe that as we diligently seek you, Lord, you will reward us for that. Thank you for all that you have done and what you are about to do in our lives. By faith, we move forward, and we take action in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.